and so the first thing I did was blame it on the neighbor's ducks. Those three ducks have been hanging out a lot over here lately. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Saturday, April 1st here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we need to do a little work in our raised bed garden here. But first, I need to tell you about this little corn crisis I've been working through the last few days. So a few videos ago, I think it was actually on last Friday's video, I was showing y'all how well our corn germinated here talking to you about how our weed pressure was minimal and everything was just going great with our corn plot. But then, as it would be my luck, a couple days later, I started noticing some of my little baby corn plants here getting munched to the ground, just like you see right there. So although we started out with nice, beautiful, full rows, we had excellent germination, we're now getting all these little blank spots in our rows where those corn plants were being eaten and here's another one right here at the beginning of this row looks like i just didn't plant any corn seeds there but it was full just not anymore so i got to thinking hmm what's happening here never really seen this before and so the first thing i did was blame it on the neighbor's ducks those three ducks have been hanging out a lot over here lately there they are I was thinking, well, those ducks been eating my corn plants. So what did I do the next day? Kind of patrolled around here. The ducks were over here, but I kept a close eye on them and they weren't really touching the corn. They'd walk around in there a little bit, but they weren't eating any of the plants. And I noticed it was getting worse day by day. So it started out this little spot here on the end of the plot. And then we started getting all these blank patches kind of all over the plot. So that led me to believe that we were dealing with a pest issue, a pest that I have never really dealt with before to my knowledge. So a couple afternoons ago, I got down real low on the ground, looking real close at those corn plants, and I found one of these guys. Took a picture of it with my phone, went inside to my office, started digging around on the internet, and from what I can tell, this is what they call a yellow-striped army worm. Now I've heard stories of army worms destroying people's gardens, but I've never dealt with them here that I know of. Now when I was in college and worked on the maintenance crew at a golf course, we dealt with them there and we had to spray for them. So I'm aware that they can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. So I knew I had to act quick. So I went and grabbed my little jug of spinosad here, mixed up a tank in my backpack sprayer. I sprayed them two afternoons ago and I sprayed them yesterday afternoon. So I sprayed them twice, which is probably a little overkill, but I wanted to stop the bleeding as quick as I could. Now this spinosad is something we always spray on our corn, but never this early. So this is what we use to treat for corn earworms, so we don't get worms munching on the top of our corn ears. We usually don't spray it until we start seeing silks appear. But in this case, those army worms were about to mow down this entire plot of corn here, so we had to act fast. Now, if you're someone that never likes to spray your garden, regardless of the amount of damage you're getting, that's fine. You do you, that works for you, no judgment here. But if you don't mind spraying your garden with organic controls, I would highly recommend always keeping a little jug of this on hand because you never know when you're gonna need it. Now, I don't know that we've completely eradicated the army worms in this corn plot, but we've definitely stopped the bleeding this morning. There was no more significant damage compared to what there already was yesterday afternoon. And some of these corn plants here that had been much down pretty good, those few right there are starting to grow back. They're not getting much on any longer. So that makes me feel a lot better. So hopefully crisis averted there. Hopefully those plants that were chewed on a good bit will grow back. Looks like a majority of them are recovering pretty well. What's odd is that it was a very isolated incident only happening in this plot here. Haven't noticed it in any of our other plots. I've been keeping a real close eye on our tomatoes that we planted just a few days ago, making sure they're not starting to get munched on because I may have to treat those as well. Now, let's focus on something a little more positive here in our raised bed plot where we have two of these tall beds full of tater plants that are looking pretty dang good. This variety here, which is called Elba, 
It's the slowest to join the party, but it's finally joining the party there. I was worried that these were never gonna come up, but they're starting to look a lot better now. Now the fastest growing variety we have in our raised beds here would be this one here, which is called rose gold. We can already see some blooms forming on those plants there. These two over here, these two varieties have done pretty well. So we have the Sharp O'Meara right here on my right, the right side of the bed. And then we have the Thin Apple Fingerlings right here on this side of the bed. Now we've already healed both of these beds a little bit, but we need to heal them a lot more today since these plants have gotten so big and bushy. In this bed, we haven't added any soil. We basically just filled back in those trenches we created when we put our seed taters in those beds. Over here, with this fast growing rose gold variety, we did add some soil to these and mounted it up around those plants there, as you can see. And then with this slower growing Elba variety, we haven't done any healing or backfilling of soil with these, but we probably need to start today. So earlier this morning, I went over to the Big Blue store. You gotta get there early on a Saturday. That place turns into a madhouse around lunch. But I went and got a couple bags of potting soil so we can start mounding up the soil nice and tall around these tater plants. So let's start out with this elbow variety here. And before we heal taters, we always like to side dress, give them a little fertilizer. So we're gonna put a little bit of this Nature Safe 855 around these plants. We may actually not have to add any soil to this side of the bed since these plants are still just kind of getting up and going. So we're just going to start out by backfilling this trench here and we'll see where that gets us. If we need to add some soil, we've got some so we can. So that probably will be good for these plants for the time being. Once some of those smaller plants catch up to these bigger ones, we can add some more soil in here. We're just kind of leveling it out will work for now. Now for this other bed, I know we're gonna need to add some soil because it's pretty much already been leveled out. So we're gonna start out with just a bag of pot mix here. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of mushroom compost to this, mix it in. This is Alana Miles' favorite soil amendment. Some of y'all won't get that. But probably put about a half a bag of this in here. And we'll get our hands dirty, get it mixed around. And before we heal these for the last time, let's go ahead and side dress these a little bit here. We've already done this one time. We usually like to side dress taters two times. So this will be the last time they get anything. Now we can take our slightly faded dog's bucket here, start adding some soil around these plants. And so that's what we're going for there. May not be what you're going for, but this is what I'm going for. Nice tall mound up around those plants. That's about as tall as I can get it without soil falling over the side of the bed. Considering how deep we planted these, that should be plenty good enough. Now I just need to mix me up one more batch of soil in the wheelbarrow and we'll get some soil around these Sharp O'Meara plants here. And there we go. Now there's no guarantees that it will, but that there should give us our best shot at a really abundant harvest of taters. Now the next thing we need to do is correct the mistake we made by planting our cucumbers too early. Now for some reason planting too early didn't turn out to be a mistake with these yellow squash plants. You can see they're looking great. Might have some blooms on them within the next week or two. I have thinned them out so we've only got one plant per corner. But planting too early was a bit of a mistake with these cucumbers here for whatever reason. We've got some spots here where we've lost a few plants. We've got some plants that are not looking so hot they may recover. So we need to kind of fill in these gaps here today. That way we have a nice full row of cucumbers to climb our trellis. I'm just gonna poke a few holes here along this row. Thankfully, I saved some Excelsior cucumber seeds. I didn't plant them all the first go around because I knew I was taking a bit of a risk. So I do have some left over to use for replanting. So we're gonna replant about seven or eight seeds here. And we're just gonna hope that these plants that are still standing will kind of turn the corner and make it that way we will have a nice little stand of cucumbers here. 
Got one seed dropped in each of those holes. These seeds germinated pretty well for me, even in cool soil the first time, so they should germinate really well now. No need to drop two seeds per hole there. And just get those covered up and packed in. So that was for our bed of pickles, and hopefully on the next video, we can get these carrots harvested here and get our slicing cucumbers planted. Don't have time for it today because it's gonna rain here in a little bit, but we'll get those out of there, get this bed turned over, get some slicers in there. But what we do have time for is a little snack and a little gathering of groceries for supper tonight. So our snow peas here have completely outgrown my little string trellis, and I've gotta get in here pretty quick within the next day or so and try to re-separate these varieties so I can harvest them a little easier. Usually our English peas only get, you know, three foot tall or so. I don't know why these have gotten so much taller. I don't know if it's a soil issue. The soil's just feeding them real well or the weather's been just right. But usually the heat gets them before they get this tall. But I'm happy to see lots of flowers on there. And if you look on this side, we've got lots of little snacks on there so this variety with the white flowers here is called blizzard never grown this variety before we got the seeds from mi gardener but i couldn't be happier with the variety at this point and these little snap peas right here man the texture on those and the flavor is top notch so that was our snack now as far as our groceries go i want to get some of this head lettuce here now this stuff didn't germinate super great you can see the red lettuce over there the cherokee germinated pretty well but some of this over here didn't germinate that great we're still gonna get a good bit of lettuce out of here this stuff has really turned the corner since we side dressed it with some nature safe 855 it's really looking good so we grew all these varieties back in the fall and ate most all these varieties back in the fall the one i didn't get to really try back in the fall was this variety here this is an oak leaf lettuce called bower and it was a little slower to grow for me in the fall and the arctic blast kind of got it before the heads got really big but we've already been eating two or three heads of this stuff it is absolutely delicious and pretty too and grab one of these out of here you can see that there man that's some good looking stuff now this head of lettuce isn't massive by any means but we've been trying to eat this stuff Right now, while it's still a little cool around here before it gets too hot and lettuce will usually start getting a little bit bitter. So last night we made kind of a Asian sesame ginger salad with some of this and some shrimp and it was mighty, mighty fine. I think I might have the same thing again for supper tonight. Maybe throw some of those sugar snap peas in the mix. Now besides the taste and texture of this lettuce, one thing I really like about it is that it's easy to prepare. So it reminds me a lot of the Salanova lettuce types if you've ever tried any of those. So you just take your knife and kind of cut that core out there and then you're ready to go. Rinse it off a little bit. Don't have to do a whole lot of cutting and chopping to be ready to eat this stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Be sure to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you want to see how we planted those raised bed taters with our little trenching method, check out this video right here that we did back in February when we planted those, did the whole double row technique in trenches so we could backfill the soil and it's working really well so far. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.